Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make red wine braised short ribs with baby carrots. How delicious does that sound? We are going to braise these short ribs slowly in a Dutch oven and we are going to add baby carrots into the mix so that by the time they're done cooking, they are tender and soft and they've absorbed all that delicious red wine and really it becomes the most delicious sauce, something incredible like nothing you've ever tried. They're perfect to serve at any time with some mashed potatoes or some rice because that sauce and those carrots are just the perfect complement to these delicious short ribs. And as I said, we're gonna use an entire bottle of wine, red wine, whatever you prefer, it's your choice, but make sure it's a wine that you would be happy to drink. You don't wanna be using a cooking wine, you wanna be using a wine that you would be happy to have a glass of because really it's gonna make a huge difference in the flavor of this sauce. So I'm super excited to teach you how to make these. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need up to five pounds of short ribs. I am using a full five pounds and a large Dutch oven. But if you're going to be using less than five pounds, then be sure to adjust your salt and pepper accordingly. Three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Four garlic cloves. 32 ounces of unsalted vegetable stock, two teaspoons of kosher salt, three quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, 16 ounces of baby carrots, one bottle of red wine. I'm using a Cabernet Sauvignon, but of course you can use whatever red wine you prefer. Two tablespoons of barbecue sauce, and two bay leaves. You will also need a cutting board and a knife, a large plate or platter, a silicone spatula, a long pair of tongs, some measuring spoons, a large bowl, a corkscrew, some oven mitts, and finally you will need a Dutch oven or a large heavy pot with a lid. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is peel and slice your garlic. I slice my garlic lengthwise, but you can also smash your garlic instead, whatever you prefer. Then you wanna place your short ribs in your large bowl. And what we're going to do is we're going to season our short ribs. So what I like to do is I put my kosher salt in a small bowl and that way I can put my hands in the salt and I can move my short ribs and I don't worry about cross contamination because of course you don't want to put your hands into the container of salt while you're handling the meat. So I find this method very effective and this way of course you can control the amount of salt that you pour onto your short ribs and you can make sure that you are giving all of them a sprinkle of salt. What you wanna do is move them around and make sure you're sprinkling the top, the bottom, the sides, and that all of your short ribs are getting a light sprinkling of salt. And then you're just going to repeat the same process with your ground black pepper, making sure to move your short ribs around, to turn them over, and just make sure that you get a nice sprinkling of that black pepper all over your short ribs, the top, the bottom, the sides, all over. Then, of course, you should wash your hands as you should always do when you are handling meat. And then you wanna preheat your oven to 325 degrees, making sure you have a rack placed in the center. Then we're gonna move over to our stove and to our Dutch oven. So what I like to do is I like to give my Dutch oven a coating of some olive oil. So then we're gonna pour that olive oil in right into our pot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our heat and we are going to start at about a medium 
high heat so that we can really get this Dutch oven nice and warm because what we want to do is add all of our short ribs into this Dutch oven. As what we want to do is just slightly brown them a little bit before they go into the oven with the rest of the ingredients because by doing this process we're really going to develop the flavor of these short ribs and it just really makes a huge difference in that sauce because those brown bits that are going to develop into the pan will marry with that beautiful wine and that vegetable stock that we're going to be using and it's just going to develop an incredible sauce. So all I'm doing at this point is every couple of minutes I come to my pan with my tongs and then I just turn those short ribs around because I want to expose the different sides of the short ribs to the hot pan because what I'm doing is just slightly browning the ribs and I just want to make sure that all sides, the top, the bottom, all sides of the short ribs come into contact with the hot pan because what I want to do is just get that beautiful color all over my ribs before I move on to the next step. Now this process should take about five or ten minutes depends on how hot of course your stovetop runs as every stovetop is a little different but what you're looking for is to just see some browning some color developing on your ribs and then once you get to that stage where your ribs have turned beautiful brown color then you're going to lower the heat on your stove and you're going to use those same tongs and that large plate or platter that you have prepared next to your dutch oven and you are going to carefully remove all of your ribs from your dutch oven and place them on to that plate now, as you saw, I lowered the heat. I did not turn the heat off because I'm going to continue to develop that delicious sauce right here in the same Dutch oven after I remove all of my short ribs. So once they're all out, you're going to want to add that garlic that you sliced or smashed and you're going to put it right into your pot. And then you're going to use that silicone spatula and you're just going to move those garlic cloves around and just help them develop some flavor and become fragrant. They're just really releasing that flavor into that oil and into those brown bits and that bit of fat that was released from those delicious short ribs. And this is gonna really help develop the flavor of the garlic. And then once you've done that, you're going to bring over your vegetable stock and you're going to very slowly add a bit because you're going to notice there's going to be a lot of steam that releases because our pot is nice and hot and then once you've controlled the amount of steam then you can go ahead and add the rest of your vegetable stock to your pot now i'm using vegetable stock because it's really going to add to that delicious flavor from the wine it's as if we had taken a ton of vegetables and slowly stewed them and just created a delicious base for these ribs so i really just love using the vegetable stock and of course i use unsalted vegetable stock because i've already salted my ribs and i don't want my sauce to end up being too salty. But if you're using a salted stock, which I don't recommend, then of course be very mindful of the amount of salt that you use on your ribs. So now once that's in, then I'm going to add my wine. As I said, I'm using a Cabernet and I'm going to add the entire bottle of wine. Yes, that is a lot of wine, but we are going to cook down that alcohol so really you will not taste any alcohol whatsoever in this dish but the flavor that develops between that garlic and those brown bits that were released and these bay leaves that I'm going to be adding and just all of those meat juices is really incredible and then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of barbecue sauce because in barbecue sauce there are so many different flavors and it really just adds some more depth to the flavor of our sauce but it will not taste like barbecue at all it's just those spices really do something special 
for this sauce. So what I wanna do now is lower my heat to medium, and I'm gonna allow the sauce to come to a soft boil, like a nice, slow boil, and then I'm going to allow it to just sit there and simmer away for a full 10 minutes to help reduce the sauce a bit and to help all those flavors marry and come together. And really what we're developing is just an incredible base for these short ribs with all of those brown bits that I'm just scraping off the sides and bottom of my Dutch oven. The flavors are going to be incredible. So during those 10 minutes, I've come over to my pot every so often and just give it all a little stir. And I've just scraped off all the yumminess from the sides of the pan and just brought all of those flavors together. And then after those 10 minutes have passed, I'm gonna use my tongs and I'm going to put my short ribs right back in to my Dutch oven. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm placing the meatier side down because I do want that delicious meat to be able to cook in that incredible sauce that we have just developed. And it's just going to get tastier as the ribs slowly braise in this incredible liquid that we are going to be cooking them in. And the idea is that they're slowly going to be just getting golden and caramelizing and just developing an incredible flavor. And you're not gonna believe the color of these ribs once we pull them out. They almost look as if they were smoked or barbecued because they're really just so absolutely gorgeous. The color is incredible and the flavor is over the top. And then of course I add my baby carrots because that also develops my sauce as these carrots slowly cook in that wine and vegetable stock they add an incredible depth of flavor to the sauce and of course the carrots themselves are going to be tender and absolutely delicious i don't know what i like better the ribs or the carrots and so i put my lid on and then now i'm going to turn off my stove and i'm going to carefully put my dutch oven into my preheated oven and i'm going to allow them to cook so I want to set a three hour timer to let these ribs fully cook. And after the three hours, what we get are these incredible ribs that are so tasty. And as I said, I don't know what I like more, the carrots or the ribs, because they both have developed the most incredible flavor. And that sauce is just absolutely divine between the carrots and the garlic and the bay leaves and the vegetable stock and of course that full bottle of wine those carrots and those ribs are just absolutely delicious and the meat from the ribs falls off the bone wait until i show you when i go to try these ribs they are literally falling off the bone. As you remove them from your pan, don't be surprised if some of the bones just slip right out. That's how tender the meat has become. And of course, look at the color. As I said, these almost looked as if they were smoked or as if they were done on a barbecue because look at that incredible color. So browning those ribs first, and then slowly braising them in that red wine and that vegetable stock with those garlics and those bay leaves and that touch of barbecue sauce with the spices it brings really develops a color and crust that is incredible. So I normally don't serve myself a side when sampling one of my dishes, but today I decided to serve myself some mashed potatoes because this sauce is so good. And my favorite way of eating it is over some mashed potatoes because really this is just a complete meal. Those ribs, those tender carrots, and then this incredible red wine sauce, which is just so incredibly delicious. I mean, how perfect is that in that beautiful well that I created in my mashed potatoes? I just couldn't resist serving myself some with potatoes on the side because this is really my favorite way 
to serve this dish. It's just absolutely delicious. And I just cannot get over that color. And look at how juicy and tender these ribs look. They have developed the most incredible flavor and color. And wait till you see just how tender they are. They are really spectacular. The outside has this incredible crust, but on the inside, they are juicy and tender and they literally fall off the bone. You're gonna love this dish. So let's take a bite because I just cannot wait to try these. They really look so, so good. And then look, I don't even need the knife. Look at how tender the meat is. It literally just pulls right off of the bone. It is beautiful. Look at the color on the inside from cooking in that red wine. And that sauce is just so incredible. The depth of flavors, can't wait. Mmm, wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is so, so tasty. It's perfect. It's got like a delicious brown crust that developed on the outside and the inside is super tender. Mmm, and these carrots, melt in your mouth they are so spectacular sweet delicious so so tasty imagine just cooking in that delicious sauce which of course i need to have a little bit of with these incredible mashed potatoes wow this is such an incredible meal the meat is just so divine and the texture and the contrast of the outside of the rib with the inside of the rib that is just super tender and juicy is just absolutely perfect. It's incredible. You're going to love this. I need to have another bite. This looks so good. Look at that. Amazing. Wow. Tasty, delicious. You're totally going to love these. So how absolutely incredible do these red wine braised short ribs and baby carrots look? Honestly, they are so delicious. They're fork tender and really they just fall off the bone. The meat becomes super tender. The carrots, of course, also become tender and they become infused with that delicious sauce that we created. And they're just super, super yummy and will become a staple in your home. This is a dish that comes together real easy. You just put it all in that Dutch oven and put it in the oven to braise slowly and they become delicious. They really feel like a dish that has had so much effort put into them and they really are over the top so delicious trust me no better yet don't trust me you're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself and of course if you've enjoyed today's recipe don't forget to like comment and share and remember to subscribe to my channel and to touch that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on a single amazing recipe that I'm planning for you and of course make sure to travel over to my video tab because I already have a ton of recipes up on my channel all kinds of dishes sweet savory from around the world and I know you're going to enjoy them and of course if you're not already following me on social media make sure to follow Sally that girl in the kitchen on Facebook Instagram and Pinterest and you can follow me as Sally that girl FL on Twitter snapchat and TikTok. see you next time Sally that girl in the kitchen <laughs>